as far as establishing standards, um, you know, foul pole to foul pole, if you go back and look at any of the previous podcasts or if you listen to any of the previous pa- uh, podcast, um, you'll, you'll hear me hinting uh, about standards. You'll hear me talking about standards with uh, different guests. And, and it's big for me, me having a military background. I'm big on discipline. I'm uh, big on, you know, setting a standard and, and keeping um, not only yourself, but the ones around you held to a, a higher standard. So, um, you know, if you're a, if you're a player, um, you, you're not that high up on the, on the, uh, the totem pole per se, you know, say there's, there's a, there's players, you could be on the teams where there, there's captains, um, whether formal or informal leaders within the team, uh, the, the leading of the stretches and, and whatever. And then you have the assistant coaches and you have the coach, and then you could have different pieces as a part of the organization. Um, so there's there's standards that are set um, all throughout, almost like a chain of command, just kind of like the in the military. So the the standard kind of comes down from the top, but the the standard can also be set um, down there just at the player level. There's a certain standard of how you carry yourself, and and that's individual. Uh, your standard or your standards, and, and I have mine, and, and I'm sure a lot of them are alike. Um, but as far as a, a player standard is, is concerned, um, what what I want to help the the young athletes understand is don't let someone else kind of put your standards like to the side and say, Hey, this is the way we're going to do it. Like you, you have to do this or I uh, don't let them affect your standards. Like you have a standard and, and you need to, you need to, you know, treat it. Hey, this is my standard. This is, this is my, th- this is my routine. This is what I do. This is how I carry myself. This is how I load my gear up. This is how I want the dugout to look when I leave, when we line up to shake hands <clears throat> after a game, um, when we leave a certain area, um, staying in my uniform um, throughout. So there's there's like a couple different ways and a couple different standards uh, that you set personally that kind of is going to rub off on other people. But I, I don't want it to affect you to where, okay, well, these people don't have the, the same high standards, so I don't have to have those high standards either. I want you to continue with your set of high standards, like, Hey, this is what I have to do. This is me. I'm not going to drop mine just because I'm in a different environment. I'm on a different team. I'm in a different organization or I'm guest playing or whatever. Like you, you set your bar and then that's it. Like that, that's who you are. Um, so just a couple of, uh, of my pet peeves as, as far as standards. And then this might be, this could rub off on you. You might learn something. You, you might be like, yep, I do that too or whatever. Um, the standard for me, let's just, we'll start at like game day, tournament day, um, getting getting to the ball field. Uh, I can't stand it. When I see it, I see a lot of teams do it. I see a lot of organizations do it. Um, they just, they kind of just roll in. Like people just get there when they want to get there. It doesn't matter to them if they show up, you know, at the same time or, you know, where they're going to meet up at. There's not like a, it, it's, People, it's like they want to be fashionably late or there's no, they don't feel the need to show up on time. Like, you know, you might have a, a tournament and your first game is at 10, so y'all meet at 9. Well, you might have a, a meeting place somewhere. We plan on field two, so let's meet by the third base side at field two at 9. Well, by the time everybody gets there and we, we, we know everybody's there and we try to figure out where we're going to warm up at. It's already 920. Now you're rushing. So you don't really have a standard. Um, you see people just show up late. Uh, just, that's just what they do. Um, they can't show up on time. They might show up in the wrong gear or they're lazy or they don't have their cleats on or this or that. So as a coach, you need to set that standard. When I say we're going to meet an hour before, everybody together is standing where we need to be before that hour before the game. Um, that's just one big in the uniform cleats on Hey, we we're ready to start our warmups right now. And then that kind of sets the tone for the day. We know what we're going to do. Let's get our, if, if you're, if you're going to hit, if you're getting into a cage, if you're getting on the bow nets, if, if you're, whatever you're doing, 
you know, you have a certain standard so everyone knows, like, this is our routine. We're going to get our dry swings in or we're going to hit in the cage or whatever you have worked out to this is this is your standard of how our warm up is. And then how we stack our gear, how how our gear looks like when we leave where we're going. Like if if we're setting up like, hey, this is, you know, the Bears tent city for the for the day or whatever, this is where we're setting up camp at. We want it to look a certain way. We want to look professional. We want to look like we know exactly what we're doing when we get here. We don't look like the bad news bears and we didn't show up and this is our first tournament and we don't really know what we're doing. Um, you know, when we get into the dugout, our, you know, we're ready to go as a team. We're not waiting for so-and-so. So-and-so's not on their phone um, sitting off with mom and daddy somewhere um, and you have to track somebody down or they left to go get something to eat. Now they're coming back and then we, we're starting a little bit early. Like there's just certain standards that you want to carry yourself. And I'm telling you, being at this showcase this weekend, it just kind of like it, it dawned on me like you, you're you under a microscope all the time. And you may not know that and you may not care. You know, there's always an eye in the sky looking at you. And you got to carry yourself. Your team has to be a certain way so that these the older you get, these colleges are going to look at you. They're going to want to talk to you. Coaches are going to want to approach you. You look like you've got your stuff together. But if they don't know, it just looks like a, a jumbled mess on the outside. It's probably a jumbled mess on the inside. Um, it, and that's that's just like small little things that you can do to kind of like take care of, you know, keep your house clean. It's a part of that keeping your house clean type mentality. Um, it's when we get into the dugout now. Are we just throwing our gear around wherever I get my gear? Or are we setting the bags up like they're supposed to be set up? You know, we got, if we have player tags or we have player cards or if we have, you know, the same bags or whatever we're doing, are they nice and neat up and out of the way? They look like, you know, we care about what we're about to do here because, you know, the better you look, the better you feel, the better you feel, the better you're going to play. So if our dugout looks good, it just sets a, you know, a certain tone for us. It gets a sort of like, I don't know, it's like when you clean your bedroom, right? You feel good about yourself or if you got a a sink full of dishes and a a couch and a bed full of laundry you don't feel so great but once that stuff gets cleaned up you feel a little bit better so it if you feel good you play good and if if you look good you you feel good and you play good so it's the same thing um you know we got bats all over the dugout we got balls all over the dugout we got trash you know we're eating in the dugout we you know it's just there's no there's no rhyme or reason for it during the game, you know, there's got to be a certain standard running on and running off the field. It has to be. Like, if, if if it's too hard for you to run from your dugout to center field or to left field or to the circle or to – like, if it if it's that hard for you to do that, to re, A, to respect the game enough, to B, respect the coaches enough, the, the, the other team that you're playing, the umpires, to just respect the game enough to give it your all to hustle – you know, I'm not talking about in between the lines. I'm talking about what you're on the ball field, boom, we're hustling. Because there's somebody else that doesn't have that opportunity that you have right now that is willing to hustle, that is willing to bust their butt every chance they get. And I'm telling you, there are coaches out there that don't realize it, but you're being watched. The, all these games are being streamed now. Whether your your team is streaming it, another team is streaming it, mom and daddy is streaming it, as an organization, the park that you're playing at, there are so many eyes on you that you don't realize anymore and with these showcase tournaments that you go to man there's college coaches all around that don't want you to know that they're even there they don't want you to notice them maybe on day one they're just kind of getting a vibe they're, they're, they're checking your vibe and see what's going on then the next day they may or may not talk to you from what they have saw the, the previous couple of days or the day before so you this standard that you're setting it go back to the drawing board it's almost like right now i'm just saying hey do an audit. What do we look like when we take the ball field? You know, you can set this set this right now. This is the end of the year. We're coming into the fall. A lot of teams are done. They've already had their last tournament. You know, you might have one tournament left. You could have two tournaments left, whatever. But this could be a part that you put into your notebook, your journal for next year. I'm setting the tone for next year. I'm setting that tone now, this year. You know, it's another one that, that's big of mine. When the game is over with, gloves and mask and whatever just goes throw all over the place on the field, and then we hurry up and get over and shake hands. Hey, let, let's come together real quick. Let's let's run off the field. 
Let's come together. Let's set our mask and gloves in a line. Let's set them in a circle. Let's set them together. Let's not look like like a hot mess. It, that's just some things that, get, that gets under my skin. One big thing for me when it comes to uniform, I, I can't stand to see it. If you have any article of your team's uniform on, it is to be worn properly. It is to be it, like if you have a button jersey, don't unbutton it. You wear it. You wear the whole thing the right way, or you don't wear any of it at all. Don't do it. Don't change where people can see you change. It just doesn't look good. It, it's not. It, it doesn't. It, it doesn't give people a good, a great feeling about you. You know, it. it, it stay. It, stay in your uniform. If you're going to change, completely change. Don't show up, you know, you got your jersey on, but you're wearing sweatpants and Crocs and you're, you're like, it just, I, I know in your mind, you think you, you look cool, you know, look at me, whatever. Uh, but I'm telling you right now, that's not it. That's, that's not a standard. It just, it, it doesn't look good. It looks trashy. Once your tournament is over and you're done and, and you can get out of your uniform, you know, I understand taking your, your cleats off and wearing Crocs, but keep the rest of the uniform tidy. It, 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 tuck your shirts in. Keep your shirts tucked in. You're a professional, right? You want to act professional. You know, I get it. You're not getting paid to play that. I understand that. You're not getting paid to play that, but you need to act professional. And this goes into that that professional etiquette. You know, it, you want we want to treat it like a business. Folks that know me, they know, like, when we travel, go somewhere for a weekend or, or if we're going to a tournament or doing something, whatever, to me, it's a business meeting. I set that tone with my daughters. It's a business meeting. We're going out there. We got business to take care of one way or the other. You know, it is supposed to be fun, and I, and I get that, and, and they understand that, too. But, you know, we put all this work in, and it's not just, oh, well, you know, I, I didn't pitch very well. I just walked three batters and gave up three hits in a row and the coach didn't pull me. So, um, and then I just, you know, head to the dugout and think everything's okay. My, my nuggets are waiting on me or my Gatorade. Mommy's going to bring me a bag of chips or my gummies or something. Nah, th this, it, it, well, I guess it depends on what age group you're playing, but once you get to a certain point, it, it's got to be, you, you need to take it serious because at the end of the day, it's a lot of time. A lot of energy, a lot of effort, and a lot of money. So I don't know how you go about talking to your loved ones. I don't know how you go about talking to your kids. I don't know how you go talk about how do you go about talking to your team. But the way it is now, yeah, man, everything is we're talking about splitting hairs and, and this and that when it comes to who's getting looked at and who's not. Don't make it easy on them to cut you out of their circle. Don't make it easy on them for them to say, yep, you know what, that team, any of those girls on that team, I'm just not, I'm not into them. I, I don't want them, I don't want them to come to camp. I don't want to offer them a spot. I don't want to, I don't want to talk to them. I don't want to watch their games because I see how they act off the field. They're like slobs. They don't care. They, they just, they run amok. They, they, they're hanging out with mamas and daddies throughout the day. You know, there, there's a lot of teams that I see out there that, Moms and daddies don't interact with their kids hardly at all during the day, during the tournaments, unless there's a game break. Like between games, I mean, it's just, it's standard. This, it's, this is our business. It's what we came here for, you know? So as we get into that professional etiquette, I saw it this weekend. I'm not going to name the teams. I'm, I'm not going to name the where, where I was at. But, um, I mean, this is a showcase tournament. So, yeah, you, you want to perform well. Um you're looking at, at different scenarios. You're playing some different competitions and stuff. You're just, you're trying new things out. Um, there's not a whole lot on the line. You just want a good show, and you want to, you know, have your players um, excel and, and getting in, in in situations and making plays and and facing the competition and stuff like that. One thing you don't want to do is argue calls, balls and strikes, or, or calls that get, went, didn't go your way. You definitely don't want to do that at a showcase tournament when there's college coaches that you know they're there. doesn't matter what age. If you're 14, 16, or 18, um, it, it doesn't matter what age you are. If you're out there and you're arguing an obstruction call, 
in a game that no one's no one's got a book, no one's got score, no one's got you know there, it's finished last batter uh, when the time runs out. I mean, there's no. I don't know why any for any reason there would be an argument to, with the umpire. I, if you want to talk between innings and and have a conversation about it, by all means. But man, don't stop and challenge a, a, a call that it's not going to be overturned. It, it's it's meaningless to argue. You all you're do, you literally all you're doing is shining a bad light on yourself and your team by arguing a call at a showcase. Where there's no tournament, it's just like it's a it's a five game guarantee. You're you're gonna you're just gonna play a, a random five, and that's that's literally it. You get nothing. The 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 college does, the colleges that are there they don't care who wins. They want to see maybe a pressure pack situation, bases loaded here, we got two outs. They want to see that, or they maybe they will see a girl that it's uh, been mowing them down. You know, there's a pitcher that just had just total control and she's she hadn't give up anything. But they don't want to see you get all messed up because you think your player was safe or you think that player was out or she missed a tag or missed a tag up or she left early or where did that miss blue? What does it matter? Well, all it's do really all it's doing is creating a situation. It's creating a, a different piece to the game. That's it. And, and and now, okay, so say the call was reversed and the girl was out at home, or say the call was reversed and uh, they did call her out for leaving early. All that's doing is creating a, a brand new situation now. You know, how many of you guys have been to those showcases where a girl will lay down a bunt, they'll tell her to come back, and now I don't want you to bunt. Or they'll yell out, hey, she's bunting, setting the defense up, and this girl like, oh, crap, like I'm bunting. Everybody knows I'm bunting because they told me to bunt. Or they tell the pitcher, I don't want you to throw anything but fastballs this inning. You know, nothing but off speed this inning. Or we're going to bat seven batters. And then once we bat our seven batters, we're just going to turn over. I don't care if all seven get out. I don't care if all seven hit home runs. We're just going to bat seven. Then we're going to switch. Or we're going to, hey, you guys are going to bat for 15 minutes. Every batter is going to start with a runner on second. It, there, it's all situational stuff. No one cares if a blue misses a call. Good gracious. How, I mean, if we're arguing balls and strikes and we're arguing plays and showcases, man, you need to let somebody else get on that bucket. Okay? So that's my piece about etiquette. Make sure you are carrying yourself and you are interacting with others in a way That's <laughs> that shines a, a good light on you instead of a bad light on your team because you may not be invited back. Um, bottom line, that, I, that's you need to have professional etiquette. That's it. Treat others as how you want to be treated out there. Um, you are you're the example. You you're for for those girls and for the other coaches. Seriously, you know. Uh and I guess we'll you know we'll jump right straight into the uh, the comfort zone part of this. Um, there's two parts of this comfort zone. Um, you know, find your comfort zone. Find where you're comfortable at. Find that team. Find that group. Find you know, find that group of friends. Find where you you can be yourself. You know, get that comfort zone because when we're comfortable, we um, you know we feel like we can be ourselves a little bit more. Gives us a little bit more confidence. Gives us um, you know that little ump, like I feel good about it. I'm not, um, I'm not constantly looking over my shoulder. I don't feel nervous. I'm not paranoid. You know, get comfortable, and then once you get comfortable, break through that comfort zone a little bit. You know, push through that. You know, put yourself out there a little bit more. Uh, introduce yourself to new people. Talk to new people. Um, you know, meet new girls uh, around the tournaments. You know, at practices. You know, it, say you're a 12 u team and, and your organization's got you know, 14s and 16s, they got older ones, introduce yourself, like, throw with them, talk to them, ask them questions, it, you know, if you're, if you can do that. Uh, if you're at a tournament, um, it's not like us against the world and, you know, we don't talk to any other team and stuff like that. Find out where these girls are from. You know, if you're from Virginia and you go to a tournament in Texas and you see a girl that's got a 
California it's something on that you, know, you can tell her team's from California. Introduce yourself, talk to them, push yourself, get through that comfort zone a little bit. You know, maybe you're one that that doesn't like to talk to people. Well, talk to them. You know, and it goes something as small as at practice. You know, you've been talking about, hey, coach, I've been been working a little bit at, at whatever position. You're normally a first baseman, but you want to try playing third or you know catching. If you're ten u, twelve u, something like that, you know, put in the work. You get to go through. You push through that comfort zone a little bit. Have that confidence to do that. And you have to fail in that comfort zone. You know, it makes you stronger to fail in that comfort zone. But you're in your comfort zone, so there's people around you that that are gonna kind of catch you with that. You know, you want to push through the comfort zone, then you want to come back. You know, maybe uh, maybe your team is off and you've never guest played before and you've been thinking about it and you just keep, you don't want to because you're scared or you don't want to because you're nervous. You know, this weekend, maybe you jump out there and you do guest play. Maybe it's a friend's team or it's somebody that you know and, hey, hey come guest play with us. Or you're jumping up to 12U next year and you're still 10U. You can go guest play with a, a crosstown team or a team within the organization. You know, whatever your comfort zone is, have the confidence to kind of push through that. And you'll be, I, I, you know, I can, I can't guarantee you, but I can, I'm willing to bet you'll be better for it if you, if you trust me this this time and just push through it just a little bit. You know, instead of saying no this time, go for it. You know. That the whole the whole comfort zone, it's there, but your comfort zone can get bigger and bigger. You know, you when you think of yourself now when you when you went to trial for your high school team or you went to trial for your middle school team or this travel ball team. Or the first time you heard travel ball and I've only played rec ball and it's a huge deal. And then when you get there, you find out travel ball and rec ball is the same thing. You just travel across town, and you pay more money. So that's the difference in travel ball in a lot of situations, right? It ain't like it used to be. Like when travel was travel ball, there was very few players that did it because it just wasn't popular, wasn't big enough. It wasn't, not a whole lot of people knew about it. So now you got teams that are traveling out of state every single weekend. That's the only difference. How far are you willing to travel? That's travel ball. How far are you willing to travel? Right? <laughs> so you got out of that comfort zone to try to play this new position. You got out of that comfort zone to try for this new team. You got out of your comfort zone to tell the coach you wanted to change positions. So continue pushing yourself. Get out of your comfort zone. You know, maybe you're too nervous to try hitting coach because you don't want to be told how bad you're swinging. Or you're too nervous to tell mom and daddy you want to try pitching. And then all of a sudden now you you push through that that comfort that comfort zone you were in. And or, you know, how about this? How many times do we hear um Every weekend, I bet you can look on Facebook or Twitter or wherever, and you'll see so and so needs a bracket bracket pitcher. Well, you can get out of your comfort zone, and say, "Mom and Daddy, tell them I'm a bracket pitcher," and then boom, they don't know. This team doesn't know who you are if you're a bracket pitcher or not. Do you show up, right? Because every weekend, if you look on all your little social media groups that are out there, all, all the pages that are on Facebook. You'll see every weekend teams needing guest players all the time, right? Jump on it one time. Go guest play. Meet somebody new. Get coached by somebody different. I'm not saying your coach is bad. You need to go guest play and join that team. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is go listen to another coach. They're probably saying a lot of the same stuff, but just using a different word, using different ways to get it across to you. So if you're in a situation, if you're young enough, the 8s and the 10s and the 12s and, you know, whatever, and you want to guess play, you want to help a team out, this or that, go for it. Go do it. You know, be around different girls. Hear different things. Look at different calls, different situations. You'll learn something. Go to camps. That's a that's a huge, that's a, a huge breakthrough your comfort zone moment is the first time you go to a camp. Everybody that goes to a camp the very first time you go, and probably a lot of camps after that, you're nervous. And the reason why is because of the unknown. You're scared of the unknown, right? You don't know 
how it's going to go. You don't know. You don't want to get singled out. You don't want to be, get called on. It's like in class, you don't want the teacher to call on you. Now, there's those ones that do want to get called on, but like you, you, if you're the one that doesn't like to be called on in class, you know, and then all of a sudden you get called on. It's like, oh man, I got called on, right? You don't want to be called on. And then all of a sudden, boom, she calls on you. Now you're out of your comfort zone, and for the rest of the day, the teacher can't get you to shut up because you got be busted through your comfort zone. And then now, they can't get you to shut up, right? What about this one? You, you're, you've never led your team in stretches, and all of a sudden, the coach calls you out. Hey, you're going to lead the team in stretches. You're going to lead us in warm-ups, whatever. And now, all of a sudden, that just it busts that bubble, and for the rest of the year, you're the one that's been leading stretches. But before that, before he made you do it, you were too scared to get out there in front of your own team. Right, it could be something simple as a raffle. You you know you got the raffle. They make you read the name off. They get you through your your comfort zone. Got to push yourself a little bit. Got to push yourself. So I know I thought a bunch of examples, and it just yeah, I get to roll and get to rambling, get to throw it out there. So um, sort of that you know that's how it is with the big three. It just pops up. Some stuff I write down. I'll tell the wife to write it down or I'll write it down or I'll put a note somewhere and it'll be like, what's this? Like, Don't worry about it. It's, it's my big three. <laughs> so coaches, players, parents, let's establish standards and let's, let's stick to those standards. If we need to raise those standards, by all means, let's do an audit. Let's raise our standard. Okay. Uh, if the other people on the team aren't up to that, your standard, you know, I'm not saying be a, a butt about it. But don't drop your standard. You know what's right. You know what, what's, what you're supposed to do. You know the dugout's supposed to be clean. You know you're supposed to run on and off the field. You know you're supposed to be up against the cage screaming and hollering and cheering. You know, you there, there's a certain standard, and you know. Don't be lazy because everybody else is lazy. Don't fall victim to when well, nobody else is doing it. Don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Professional etiquette, look, treat the people around you the right way. Treat the fields that you're at, the facilities that you're at, the coaches, the umpires, the other parents. Be professional. Whether you're a coach, know your situation, know where you're at. Know that these girls are going to do exactly what you're doing when they get older. You're trying to set an example. You want to, you're a coach. You got your foot in the door. To continue growing the game. Now, it, if you're doing it for because if you didn't coach, your daughter wouldn't have a spot to play, then I'm not talking to you. <laughs> I'm talking to the ones that, hey, you got into this for a reason, and you're continuing to grow the game. Be professional about it. Be professional about it. If you're a tournament director, <laughs> you're not God. Okay. You can't just do whatever you want to do. Umpires, same same deal. Let's everybody be professional. Yeah, I heard tell this weekend there was an, another knockdown drag out involving that there's an there's an infamous infamous team around this area that coaches like to throw hands. So um anyway. Uh, so be professional the way you're talking to people, coaches, players, parents. That's a big thing. Parents, we can hear you. We can hear you on the camera. We can hear you. Comfort zone. Push through it this week. I'm going to challenge you this week. Push through your comfort zone. Do something. Do something you've been scared to do. I'm not talking about go skydive or bungee jump. I'm talking about do something. Volunteer if you're too nervous, you, you know. My middle one is super nervous. She won't even order at a restaurant, right? She won't. Daddy, will you order me this? All right. She's slowly getting out of her comfort zone with that because me and her mom are just like, no, you can order it. You can, you can do it. So she's starting to get out of that. She's so nervous to talk to people. It's, it's incredible. I was the same way, though, in the, when I was in the Marine Corps. 
I would walk up. I would greet the senior as we're walking. I would, I would greet them. Good afternoon, sir. And I'd put my head down. And I'd keep walking. Or, good afternoon, Sergeant Major. And just put my head down and keep walking. I was just nervous. And then, and I just grew out of it. Kept pushing through my comfort zone. And eventually I asked my wife to, to marry me. Or may, I think she may have asked me to marry her. I don't remember. I have, I'll have to ask her. I have to ask her. But anyway, uh, moving forward into this week, we got a couple more live shows that we're going to do. We are uh, going to be recording and filming uh, some podcasts that is kind of getting put together for season three of the Foul Pole to Foul Pole. That's going to go out, uh, like I said previously, it'll go out this year before next year goes or before next year comes. Uh, and then we'll get going on season four uh, for next year. Uh, if you haven't checked out the episodes, they're here on YouTube. They are Spotify. Every, they're everywhere. Everywhere you can listen to a podcast, it's there. Foul pole to foul pole. Um, 